All right, Harvey, you're one of the most amazing networkers I've ever met. You've got a Rolodex to die for. You're friends with celebrities, politicians. You've got quotes here from personal friends of yours like Lou Holtz, Shaquille O'Neal, Larry King. You worked at Sundance on the board, so you had access to Robert Redford and tons of people. So why don't you talk a little bit about networking mm -hmm. for someone who's either afraid to network, doesn't even know how to network, and how that's going to help them find a job. And I know you've just got, the book is filled with tips and ideas. I mean, it's really a topic and then networking and topic and networking. And if there's one big takeaway that you can have is just the tips on that alone are immeasurable. And why don't you talk a little bit about what networking's done for your job, your career, and your life? Well, I'd be happy to do that. If we had a Webster's Dictionary, I don't know how many words, gazillion, trillion, billion, whatever, uh, networking would be right in order to be successful mm -hmm. right at the top of the list of course and networking has changed my life uh, allow me to tell a favorite story that I don't tell too often all right but it happened to me it's the result why I'm here today wouldn't be here without this story but I wrote swim with the sharks without being eaten alive a long time ago late 80s Again, the book is still selling extraordinarily well, so the concepts and philosophies, of course, don't change over a couple decades. But my publisher sent me, William Moore and Company, over to shoot a copy of the book with an advertising agency, shoot just like this, hold up the book, talk about it, out you go. New York City, 9 in the morning, I roll in, and there's Larry King holding up his book. I think it was Tell it to the king was this was the book, all right? And I'm telling you, I mean, I get perspiry, I get nervous, shocked. Oh my gosh, Larry King. And I start thinking, oh, I've got to meet him. Boom, two minutes later, next, he gets through with his message, out the door he goes, and I have to hold up my book. I missed him. Five minutes later, I walk out. King's on the paid telephone. Pay telephone. You know, they didn't have uh, our little yeah, okay, the mobiles. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. And as we're walking out, I'm walking. He hangs up. We walk out. Stretch limousine comes up to pull him, you know, pick him up. And I'm hailing a cab. And he looks at me and says, Which way you going, kid? Called me a kid. I said, well, Yeah, I'm nervous. Well, I'm going to Park Lane Hotel. Jump in. I'll give you a ride. Now, I have 300 seconds. It's a five minute drive. I have 300 seconds how are you gonna get to the, get on yeah. Larry King. Oh, yeah. Is that high soprano? That's awesome. Oh, but thank God my father trained my mind, okay, ever since I was 18 years old. So I think a third of the people would have started talking about themselves. Eh, no good. Yep. A third of the people would have started talking how good Larry is. Won't work. A third of the people would have started saying, do you know? Well, my mind's been trained and I still do it today, and I'll do it as long as I have a breath in me. Right to my brain bank, I'm making small talk, but I'm saying to myself, what can I do for Larry King? Three minutes go by, two minutes left, bang, idea. I said to Larry, Larry, would you like to sell a lot of books? Are you interested in selling a lot of books? That's why I write them, kid. And I said, well, I've studied the book industry for a couple years. This is my first book. I think I've got some constructive ideas. Maybe I can pass them on to you. Like what, he says. Now we're right there at the Park Lane Hotel. And I gave him seven constructive suggestions how to sell books. He said, of course, James or whatever chauffeur's name was, you know, turn off the engine, talk for 15 minutes. He had me on his show the next week. 50,000 hardcover books sold in one week. I would not be sitting here if we're not for Larry King. So networking, name of the game. My father again got, got a hold of me, age 18, and here's what he said. Harvey, every single person you meet the rest of your life goes into a Rolodex. Of course, it's computer today. Rolodex file. A little bit about him on the back of the card now here is the key, and I want to repeat this. Here is the key. Find a creative way to keep in touch, underlined. Find a creative way to keep in touch. And that's what I've been doing ever since age 18. Proud to say I have 12,800 names in my computer. 
average person knows about 200 people. So that's about 2.4 million contacts in 80 countries, 40 different languages, 80% North American. And so therefore, you've heard of six degrees of separation mm -hmm. that you virtually can get to anyone within six phone calls. Well, let's just say you're living in Minneapolis. And let's say I'm in your computer, Rolodex, all right? And you've only got 10 or 15 cards. This is the value. This is the value of networking. You only have 10 or 15 cards. But let's say one of your cards is me. Well, 12,800 uh, uh, contacts, right? Away, 2 million point four hundred. 2,400,000 contacts from 12,800 names, one card. So how are you going to exaggerate how important networking is? And it goes back to volunteerism, finding your passion, absolutely joining that particular United Way, Cancer, Heart, Boy Scouts, whatever, all right? And then getting that network and then keeping in touch with them. And it also comes from, just to repeat, I think the most critical part is coming from a place where you said, not from what can I get, but how can I serve. The important thing is, when I meet anyone, what can I do for you, all right? And then again, what you're saying, you don't expect anything in return. See, that's the, that's the double key. Do not expect anything in return when people come and ask you for something. You're asking them, never never expect anything in return. And then just a quick little add-on, uh, I call it spin the win. Spin the win. Ever since I was age 21, my father told me, I would take every Sunday, 6 in the morning till 12 at night, because I could reach countries, people, time zones, spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it, and just keep calling people, how are you doing? Okay, we do this, of course, with our, our phone today, yeah, right? Yeah, so you're our spinning cell. the Rolodex I back spin then, the yeah. Rolodex, uh -huh. just did it I did it for 35 or 40 years. Keep in touch with all those people. And you've heard of the 90-10, 80-20 rule, mm -hmm. but now it's 90-10. You get about 90% of your business, used to be 80, from 10% of your customers. And entrepreneurs, listen up on that. So you really have to understand and focus, concentrate where that business is coming from and keep in touch, especially with that 10%. And that's what I did with the Rolodex. When I had 100 cards, I was in touch, of course, with 10 of them for sure. When I had 1,000, 100 to 125, I would zero in on. So it all boils down to one thing. Little things mean a lot. Not true. Little things mean everything.